Okay, hi guys. Today I'm going to show you how to create a really quick JavaScript server and client application. For the server, I'm going to use Java because, hey, I haven't used it really in two years and I thought it'd be interesting just to <laughs> change things up a little rather than using .NET, etc. or Node. Um, I'm going to use a website called Spring Initializer to create my project. I'm going to use a website called websocket.org as my JavaScript client site. Um, it does give you the code here if, if you actually want to do it yourself. I'm also not going to just start from scratch. I'm going to use this blog I quickly found. I'm going to loosely follow it. Um, this guy or gal um, creates the project, adds dependencies, um, then sets it up. We're going to do the setting up part here, um, but I'm going to use that Spring Initializer website to bootstrap my application to get started really quick. Uh, the JavaScript, I'm not going to create the JavaScript. I'm just going to use this um, websocket.org. So if you really want to do it, you can actually copy the JavaScript from down here, or you can, uh, let me go back here, you can copy the JavaScript and the HTML from here, it doesn't really matter. Um, there's going to be one little twist when you're running your JavaScript outside of, um, of outside of the running application. So if you've been familiar with, with a concept called cores, it's not cores, but it's quite similar. You need to say what origins it supports. So I'm going to just wildcard for now and just tell the the WebSocket server to just accept all the origins. Uh, that's something that's not in this article and there's no need for it given that he's running the, or she, he or she is running that uh, JavaScript in the same, in the same uh, origin. Okay, so let's start. So I've just set up this, I'm gonna use Maven, uh, I'm gonna use that version of Spring Boot. Spring Boot is just kind of a, a library really. It, it, it's very heavily in, leans it leans heavily towards um, uh, con uh, convention over configuration so there's a lot of like automatically um, configured uh, libraries and startups etc for you so really nice um, if you're using Java uh, it's used a lot in the, the new microservice um, era anyway so I'm gonna uh, I've also added a dependency, WebSockets, I'm going to need that library, so I, you can actually select what you're interested in here, the Spring, um, Spring Initializer, and it allows you to basically generate a project. So generating that project, demo WS, it is now in my downloads folder, it's going to unzip it into a temp folder, WS demo, demo WS, I'm going to open it in IntelliJ, my Java IDE of choice, I just copy the path here, so I'll copy it and we'll just find Azure Arc, get up a boom boo. Okay, let's open it. Open project. Demo WS. Okay, I'm going to open it as a project. I'm going to trust the project and I'm going to open this window. Okay, so I'm just going to open my Maven window and I'm going to just build this lifecycle and let's just do install. So it should build okay. Okay, so now I have my project. Let's start adding the, the WebSocket part of it. Okay, so we go down to source, main, Java. Here is my Spring Boot application. This is my entry point, basically. Uh, in this article here, uh, the author does actually go about adding that. It's already there for us. So we're starting at this position here. I'm not gonna copy the package, the namespace for .NET people. Um, I'm actually just gonna copy this part of it. I'm also going to create a file in advance, so socket text handler. So let me just create that file, new Java class. Okay, and there's another one which is follows next, which is WebSocket config. So created those two classes. And let's go back now and we'll copy the, the content. So import Okay, it's giving out about a missing um, library. That would be because I never added it in my initializer. I'm not going to add it either. This, this would correspond to that dependency. Uh, if we look at the code, it's just basically using a JSON object and getting it, it's turning the payload into a JSON object and then just getting the user property out of that. So I'm just gonna, for this quick demo, I'm just gonna hard code it. Hi, how we, may we help you? Okay, uh, that can now go. So this is giving out about something. What is it? 
great test. Okay. Duplicate class found. Interesting. I'm gonna ignore that for a moment for a moment and assume that something has gone wrong. Oh, maybe I put it in the wrong place. Yes, I put it in the wrong place. That would explain it. Okay. This is what I need to replace. Okay. Now let's move on to the configuration part, which is here. Copy the content here again, ignoring the package. Okay. Okay, so now what we're doing is we're registering uh, a WebSocket handler. So this is the WebSocket configurer, and it's at the user endpoint. So we know that this is going to run at the user endpoint on the on the, the server. The server is going to be Tomcat, which comes as default with Spring Boot. It's going to be on port 8080. So we know we're going to be at localhost port 8080 slash forward user. That's going to be where our WebSocket is. I also did mention that we're actually going to um, support Origins. So we go allow, set allowed origins, that's it. So we're just gonna allow everything for now. Okay, so that should work. So let's test this. So we're gonna run the, the application. Should start. You can see it tells you which port it's running on. And of course we do know it's on a slash user um, path. So let's go back to websocket.org and let's try and connect. So we're going to connect to WS. So WSS is Secure WebSockets, uh, which I recommend you use, by the way. And to be honest, it's hard enough to use a WebSocket these days with everything being HTTPS. But anyway, let's continue our localhost. So it is localhost colon 8080 slash user. So in theory, we should be able to connect. And now we're connected. So if I send it some information, it was trying to do this um, JSON object and get the user, etc. Now we're just basically going to get the response. Let me just quickly go back to refresh our memory in the handler. Now we're going to get this response. So when it gets a message, actually that's payloaded in news. We don't need that line of code or this exception handler. But anyway, let's run it. Send. So we sent this and it received. It responded with uh, received. That's pretty much it. Really quick. Um, I suppose the, the thing to, to catch, there's a few things that can catch you out with WebSockets. Uh, WebSockets, when they have an error, the error handler doesn't really tell, give you any information. So it's on the closed handler you will find information. So I've done this before and um, uh, I quickly discovered the origin issue. So I, had to, I allowed the, the set the allowed origins basically. Um, what else? I wouldn't recommend you do it this way anymore, there's better solution, especially if you're using the cloud with um, AWS, you have API, API Gateway, API Gateway supports WebSockets with Azure. You've had SignalR for a while, you've had the SignalR service, and in fact, since build this year, you now have the Azure Web Pops Up, which is actually a better fit for this JavaScript client, because um, it's just a raw WebSocket, let's call it that, uh, rather than have to bring in the SignalR client and understand the hubs, etc. So that's pretty much it. I hope it's helped someone. And we'll leave it there.